Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, well, welcome to, to this session. Honestly, I was not expecting such a packed room for, for this, but well, uh, we have a very long title, but basically what I want to tell you is that we need to delegate, not only in Drupal, but also in all, everywhere. So, well, firstly, let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, my name is uh, Pablo Lopez. I'm Drupal developer at Lulabot. Uh, here you have my handle for Drupal Dr. and some other social network. So, what is this uh, session about? So, basically, when we are processing a web request, some tasks might be time consuming or resource intensive. And performing uh, those tasks directly can slow down the server time response and impacting the user experience. So if we try to, to move this task to back on processes, we can leverage those additional resources that can be used to manage uh, more requests at the same time or any other task. Besides that, as the user traffic increases, it can become crucial to have a quick response time to give room for more requests and also to avoid possible concurrency issues. So it's also not only for that, it's also for maintaining the whole system stability. So I think the, the main idea I would like you to, to have after this session is, well, this last sentence about by delegating secondary tasks to background processes, we can enhance the efficiency, responsiveness, and scalability of our web application also ensuring that we'll have a better performance and a seamless user interaction that that's at the end what, what we all need. How we can decide which tasks are secondary enough to be moved to, to background? Uh, well, there is not a size fits all solution. It depends on each situation. In this case, I selected these five categories, but maybe you can have others that works better for you or, or not. So the idea is we need to think whether the task is critical or not. It's something that if we are not doing it now, it will affect some other parts of the, of the platform in general. Also whether the tasks are simple or complex. Sometimes we can do a lot of uh, simple tasks and we don't need to, to postpone them because they are simple enough that they are not adding uh, that overhead. And all, vice versa. We also need to detect where are our bottlenecks. We can, we, have, we can have our bottlenecks because we are doing very complex calculations, like well, generating reports or whatever, or whether the problem is because we are accessing to the, I don't know, to third party APIs or the database or file system a lot of times during the request. Also whether the, the task is urgent or not, and probably the most important is whether this tag has a user direct impact or not. Uh, based on that, we just have a series of good candidates that could be moved to background. So email or post notification, that's something that happens very often. File processing or image processing, that's something that Drupal Core already does. Search indexing, uh, PDF generation, third-party generation, or even collect payments for, <coughs> sorry, for e-commerce site. But also, it depends a lot of the con on the context. For instance, if we are running an e-commerce site that is selling books and we are book, uh, selling bestsellers, it's not super critical to check the stock on the fly every time because that's usually, uh, those are books that are available in any warehouse. But if we are selling like first edition of a Shakespeare uh, novel, there are only one or two in the, alone the, in all the world. So we need to be very clear that we have stock enough to sell it because also it's quite expensive. Uh, or other things like push notifications can be trivial and be postponed if we are sending, a, I don't know, supermarket offers for the week. But if we are waiting for a heart surgery and I'm the surgeon, I need to send the push notification. I need to be sure that that notification is sent now and is received by the, by the patient. And well, so once this is some theory, let me now present you a 
personal project. This is a personal project called Say.Hi. I think this is uh, going to make me millionaire, so I will retire from, from Drupal with it. So basically, this is a social network that it has a, a killer feature, a, killer, a feature that everyone wants. It allows you to broadcast messages to all users from a public forum. Who wouldn't like to, to receive random emails at any time from arbitrary people? So basically, it's a pretty simple. So we are providing this form. It can be done with just a few lines of code. And anyone can access to this form. You can submit the form. And any user that is registered in the platform will receive an email with this text. So well, it's, that's a good idea. Well, let's see. And here is the code. Here, here is the code. So we have, this is the submit callback for this form. You can see that it can be done pretty straightforward. Just a six line of code that will make me millionaire. So basically, we are collecting the data from the form. We are calling our super service that iterates over all the users in the system and sends the email with the data that we collected from the form. And we print this nice message that, OK, we have sent all the messages, all the things. So apparently, everything is quite good. But uh, well, let's see what's happening under the hood. So this is a diagram I think everybody's familiar with. So we are submitting the form. We are processing the request. And we are uh, sending a, a response to the, to the user. If we dive into that uh, blue section, we can think that we are doing like multiple tasks across the across system. So we are receiving the request. We are processing task one, task two, task three, and we are sending the response. We can map these uh, diamonds, sorry, uh, with these three operations that we are doing here. Collecting the data, processing the data, and printing the message. So at the beginning, everything is OK. We have done our load test locally with a few users. That's a good idea. We are validating our idea. But, and now it's time to send this to, to production. What's happening? We are starting to get people. We are receiving a, a good number of people that likes to be annoyed with emails every day, many times. So the thing is that the initial task that is collecting the data from the form is not being affected, because it's always the same. Receiving the, sending the message is, uh, sorry, printing the thank you message is always the same. But what's happening, processing the, the emails and sending the emails, as the users are increasing, this task is starting to take more and more time. We are starting to receive some notification that, OK, this, we are struggling. The, we are, uh, this form is taking too much time. Sometimes we are getting errors. But well, at this point, we say, OK, let's increase a bit the PHP memory and let's see what, what happens. <laughs> but after a few more users, we are start to succumb to success. So we, are, we have too many users. We have a single server with that amount of memory, and we are not able to manage the request from the user because it, it's not possible. So I made some, some numbers with this. So you can see that when we have one user, it, the request to the form, it takes nothing, 10 users, 100 users, 1k user. But when we arrive to 10k user, it takes like four minutes to process the form. <laughs> That's not acceptable. If we are talking about memory, our initial server had only 128 megabytes of memory. So it worked well for 110, 100, 1,000 uh, subscribers. But when we arrived to 10K, we had to increase the memory because we, are, we were expanding like almost 200 megabytes per request. So, and that's too much. So we needed, if we grow, that's not scalable. So uh, does Drupal provide tools to try to solve this bottleneck? Um, yes, of course. <laughs> I would not be here otherwise. Uh, but we need to, to think about uh, what kind of, where is the bottleneck? We need to analyze the situation. Because in this case, for instance, we can try to, the first thing, to improve the code, to try to reduce redundancy, to try to add cache layers, to try to, to act to access directly to the database instead to go through the uh, entity API to collect the emails. But in the end, the bottleneck is sending the email. That's something that we 
well, we can do things, but in this example, we, we, we cannot improve. So we need to, to think about how can we achieve this? How can we delegate this uh, email processing to, to have a better responsive uh, and scalability for the system? So here in Drupal, we have like three different approaches to achieve that. So we have Batch API, Chrome API, and Q API. Any of them are modern. All of them have been in Drupal for a very long time. But sometimes uh, we are not thinking about them when we are working in a project because well, that's something that might happen in the future if our project grows. So let's talk firstly about Batch API. I think we all have seen uh, this progress bar here in the rebuilding permission, running update PHP, or any other Buzzword cooperation, for instance. So basically, what Batch API does is to try to keep resources under control. Uh, so it adds that progress bar that, well, we are having that progress bar that takes care that you are not having timeout, that you are not uh, running out of memory, uh, but in the end, you are having uh, that progress bar that are not executing the task in an actual background because it's happening in the in the main thread of the of the server and also takes control of the user browser uh, well if you can run batch api also through dras but if you are going there you are not having that that experience of uh, of having a a better website because you are that uh, that progress bar and also that that's something that is quite important we are not sure that the, whether the operation is finished or not. Because uh, at some point, while the progress bar is there, the user could just, uh, OK, I'm bored. I'm opening uh, any social network or whatever in my browser. So the, the, the task was stopped at 50%. Uh, so sadly, half of our subscribers will not receive the, that email. So uh, from my perspective, I think Batch API is more uh, intended for administrative task so because the administrators know that they have to wait until the task is done but well it's it's also uh, good to see how it works so if we go back to our diagram we are uh, collecting the data from the form we are printing the message but instead of having a huge diamond in the middle we are splitting the task in small batches that are run one after the other until we finish. So we are not uh, taking all the resources that we did in the past. So here is the code about how we solve this solution and we move it to Batch API. So basically, uh, everything is happening in the definition of, of this array. Uh, since Drupal 8.6, there is a Batch Builder class, but well, basically it contains uh, is a wrapper for, for this array. So the key part of this array, these operations, where you define the different uh, chunks of data or chunks of operations that we are going to, to execute, and uh, the finished callback, that is what is happening after everything is processed. You have the title, we need message, error message, some other properties that you can add. And here is where we are creating our operations. So, we are loading all the users in the system, and we are dividing them in groups of 50 users. So if we have 10K, we'll create like 200 operations. So we are going to do the same task 200 times, and we are using the different name and message. And we are just calling to botch set, and only with this uh, call to this function, possibly the, the batch, we are, cre we are delegating the whole batch to the batch API, and they will take care of everything for us. So here we have the, this init batch function where you can define some variables that's completely optional. And here we have the process items that basically we are doing exactly the same that we were doing before. The only thing is that instead of iterating across all the users, we are just processing 50 of them. And finally, when everything is done, we are sending the same message. So basically, it's almost the same, but let's see how the things change. If we talk about uh, time, well, we are almost in four minutes again. 
even a bit more because well the, the batch itself is having some small overhead. But well, if we talk about memory, things are much better now. We are more or less stable and we are using about like five megabytes of memory instead of 200. So we are not having the best user experience, but at least uh, we are not burning our servers. This is Batch API, and let's go for Cron API. Cron API is uh, the way to delegate administrative or scheduled task that needs to be run in, in the background and is based in, on Hook Cron. So that's something that uh, you implement Hook Cron in your module, and anytime the, the Cron controller or the Cron Drust command is executed, all the tasks are, all the hooks. Cron are, in, are, ex, are invoked and all the tasks are, are executed. We have some limitations here. So Cron tasks may not all have the same requirements. I mean, uh, sometimes we have uh, some administrative or background tasks that need to be done like one every hour. Sometimes some others need to be done uh, like once a day. So it's not uh, easy to have that granular uh, execution time, and it's also hard to have a clear review of the tasks that have been run. So if you check the log after Chrome has been run, you now, it, some messages, uh, who Chrome for module A has been executed and it took two seconds. Uh, module B, it took three seconds. But you don't know exactly which tasks have been executing one in any of them. And also, if something fails, uh, the whole thing are stopped and you can have a problem with that. That leads up to this other problem that could be the, the overlap. Imagine that that we have a, a lot of tasks that are being executed as part of, of Cron, and Cron is taking like, imagine, uh, 10 minutes. And we have a one of our Cron tasks need to be executed every minute. Even if we schedule a uh, Cron to be run every minute, even that we cannot run Cron while we are running Cron. That task is not going to be executed every minute. It's going to be executed every 10 minutes because the rest of the Cron tasks my task is not aware of are not capable to be finished on time. And also, we, that's something that we found the, the hard way. Uh, you can have timeout issues. We had a hosting provider where we were running Cron every hour. It took, in our test, it was taking like six or seven minutes. And after a while, we found that we had a lot of tasks that had not been executed. The problem was that the hosting provider was killing the Chrome processes after five minutes of execution. So we need to, to be clear and be aware of that kind of things that can happen and silently fail. Uh, there is also an initiative to replace Hook Chrome with a more modern approach in core. That's something that uh, people is working on and hopefully will will improve this. So let's see this with a uh, brief example. So here is my social network Chrome implementation. Here we have this maintenance task that can be executed two or three, five a day and that's enough. But now we had a great idea. We go on we want to send an email to every user, besides all the I already receiving, seeing them good morning. So we are starting to run in Chrome every hour. That is affecting this, uh, this task, because this task, instead of once or twice a day, is going to be executed 24 times a day. But well, that's not, not a big problem so far. But, uh, but well, if the hour is between 8 and 9, we are saying good morning to everyone. But what if we have another team member that creates another mm, hook cron that needs to be executed every five minutes? And I'm not aware of. Our users are going to receive this email not once, but maybe five or six times a day. So for cron with cron tabs, we need to be careful when we define the, the cron hooks. And how can we solve this? We have country modules for that. Uh, I talk, there are many, but I will talk about two. We have the simple Chrome module that uh, just provides a, a UI 
to, to show all the different cron jobs that you have in the system. You can add them some way to execute one after the other. And also, that's something very important. You can uh, add different um, time intervals for each cron defined by each module. So that adds some kind of vulnerability that it's necessary. And also, uh, give access to queues and allows to define plugins. So the problem we had before, instead of having the, the two tasks, the maintenance task at the good morning task at the same hook run uh, with that extra logic to, to execute them depending on the hour, we can just split this in two plugins, one to be executed every hour, one to be executed once a day, and the problem would be solved. And we also have ultimate cron. This is a much more flexible and complete module. It provides basically the same features that I mentioned before, plus uh, allow, the, allow to configure it to use any callback to be a cron task. So anything that you already have could be converted automatically to a cron task. It allows to have parallel execution and also add uh, support for custom plugins for triggers, runners, launchers, etc. So for instance, instead of just uh, checking the, the hour, you can check if it's 8 a.m. and whatever, whether it's raining or anything that you can to trigger the, the task. So that makes it much more simple. And if you don't have access or you don't want to, to use those country modules, you can try to achieve this uh, playing with, uh, with CronTap. Uh, CronTap, that's something that is, it requires some, some knowledge, but well, it's something that I, I guess is uh, affordable by most of developers, but we have the problem that not all the hosting providers may give you access to, to CronTap, and sometimes uh, if you are managing a huge platform that is uh, using different servers and so on, uh, you may need, or a multi-site, you may need to have your all your CronTap files uh, synchronized, and that could be a bit Problematic, but well, that that works. So basically, we have this uh, cron tab that runs the regular cron every hour, but we have extra tasks that like uh, doing this indexation of uh, categories list. So you can just execute this draws command from the cron tab. So we don't need to take care of generating or draws command. Sorry, or hook cron. Something similar, we can use Drash PHP eval to execute any custom service we already have or any custom function we have available in, in a Drupal site, so that's fine. And also, we can run um, queues, uh, for instance, in this case, every two minutes. So that's something that, that, that will help. And yeah, we don't have some number for here, and let's move to a bit to, to QAPI. I think QAPI is the the key part of, of this regarding this, the examples I'm I'm showing. And QAPI basically is it offloads the the load from, from the main thread and throws it to, to somewhere else. Basically instead of doing things you are telling someone to do the things on your behalf. This is something that is not new. This is something that is not uh, only for, for Drupal or there are lots of third-party services that provide queues like SQS or RabbitMQ. There are, <coughs> sorry, uh, queue implementation um, plugins for Laravel, for Symfony. So that's something that is pretty, pretty common. And basically, when you are running your task, we are back to our example. We have our to initial diamonds, but the thing in the central diamond, instead of sending all those emails, we are just telling the queue, okay, you need to send one email to these people, you need to send one email to this one, and that's all, and we can continue. Someone will take care of it, but the user experience is not being affected because of that, because all, also the, the user doesn't need, in this example, to send their emails now. So working with queues is something that is not uh, quite hard. Generally in Drupal, we have like four concepts for views in general. So we have this queue service that is calling to the queue factory. Uh, you pass the name of the queue 
and your queue factory relies on a queue backend. Drupal provides two queue backends that are the database queue, that is the default one, and the memory backend, that basically is an, an array. And you can also define other backends uh, to integrate it with third party, like, uh, well, as mentioned, RabbitMQ or SQS, and you can define your own backends for your needs. Maybe you can use a different database table than the queue table that is used by default or whatever. So we already have the queue, and once we have the queue itself, we can just create items for the queue. It's pretty straightforward. We have the queue, you can pass the data, and that's all. You are telling the queue that, okay, we have this thing, process it whenever you want. And at some point, we want to process the queue. What we have to do is to claim an item. Uh, when we are using the default uh, Drupal queues, it's a traditional first in, first out queue. So the first item that was uh, added to the queue, it was returned, and you can start to process. You are doing your things with your, with your item, and if everything goes well, we are deleting from the queue, we, are, we don't need anymore, and if something goes wrong, we can just work with it. We can just release it to put it back into the queue to be processed again. We can delete it, or we can move it to a secondary queue for retry or whatever. So here is a simple example. And let's see how we did it, uh, the implementation with uh, C.Q, C.I. So that's pretty straightforward. So basically, we have the same uh, uh, submit callback. The only difference is that we are loading this queue, the say hi greetings queue, and once we collect the data, we are iterating over the different users, and we are adding items to the queue. Uh, here I'm using a, an object that's a personal uh, personal feeling that well when that it simplifies to to process the queue because you have a, an object but you can use a string an array or, or whatever there are no restrictions and well finally we are send we are printing the the message as we as we were so well pretty straightforward but well life isn't all roses what happens when we are creating the queue that at some point we need to process the queues. If we are not responsive processing the queue, we can have huge queues, and in the end we are having the same the same problem that we had in the past, but in another in another place because sending 1,000 emails is going to take four minutes, even if it's run in the front end or even if it's run in the in the back end. So <coughs> uh, we have some risk with queues first of all is the scalability and resource management we need to to think about how when and by who are running our queues and also we need to think about the complexity of the, of the different tasks because it's pretty straightforward to to send the things to the queue but we need to to think about the complexity of the task how we are going to react if uh, anything happens or something unexpected happens, are we going to retry? Are we going to, to put it back to the queue? Are we going to discard? Are we going to throw an exception? That something, extra things we need to, to think about. And also prioritization. So by default, as mentioned, Drupal queues are first in, first out. Uh, if you want to set priorities, there are different approaches, like creating two different queues depending on the priority. There was a queue priority module in the past in Drupal 7, but uh, well, it's not there anymore. So something that we need to, to take in, into account. So scaling the, the queue management system efficiently, it uh, takes some time as the load grows, and that's why Drupal is providing the concept of uh, queue workers, because sometimes we are trying to, to do most of the times the same things with our queues. So queue workers are automating the generic queue processing operation. So when you're creating queue workers, uh, they are integrated out of the box with, with cron. So anytime you run cron, your queues are being executed. They takes care of taking the queue, they takes care of the, whether the queue is suspended or not, 
And the only thing you need to take care of is to process your items. Also incorporate some additional features for, for queue management that are not there by default and what are, could be pretty interesting. So modules in core that is, these are uh, media, th media to generate thumbnail images or, <coughs> or locale to import different translations. So that's something that is already tested. So here is how we implemented it in say.hi. All we need to implement our queue worker as a plugin that is auto discovered in the queue worker folder. And with this annotation, we are the, the magic happens here because this queue worker ID is the same ID we have in our queue. So automatically, it connects the queue worker with, with the queue because they have the same ID. And basically, the only thing that we need to do is to implement this process item method. That uh, if we run through cron, if we run directly through through Dras, the queue, it, in, it invokes or key workers iterates over them. And the only thing we need to take into account is, is to process the item. And well, I also forgot to mention that this is quite important. Uh, this is where we are telling for how much time this queue will be running to avoid to have a timeout issue. So uh, when we are invoking the, the queue worker from cron or from, or from Drust, uh, it will be iterating over the queue during 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, even if it has not finished, it will stop to avoid to have uh, timeout issues. So that's why that's quite important because also we'll need to help us for that, but we'll need to take into account also to check uh, if for Q grows much than expected and we are not uh, processing as much items as necessary to to keep it uh, to leave it empty so the thing is that uh, we have these special um, exceptions provided so if we want if something goes wrong or whatever and we want to to delay a specific uh, Q item while we are processing it we can in in uh, throw this exception where we pass the, the seconds, we can postpone it. Uh, this is an at least. As I mentioned before, this queue will be being executed for 60 seconds. So if we are at the beginning of the, of the time of the processing uh, and we delay it for 10 seconds, it will probably be re-executed again during the same cron run. But if we are, by the end, these 10 seconds will not be able to be run and it will need to wait until the next cron execution. Uh, if we just want to add the item back to the queue to be uh, reprocessed uh, immediately, we can just throw the queue exception. And if we just suspend the queue, so something wrong happen or anything happen with this item and we don't want to process any more item from this queue, we can just throw this suspend queue exception. And that should be all. It should, uh, <coughs> sorry, cron or dras will pass to the next queue and forget about it. And finally, the only thing that we need to do is we are going, we are back to the exactly to the same function that we had at the beginning. We are loading the user and we are calling our service that sends the greetings to the user with this name and that message. And that's all. So basically, we are telling the, the queue worker what it has to do for ourselves while processing the queue. And let's talk about some country modules that we have related to queues. So we have queue UI. This module is quite helpful because it helps to, to run the queue. So you have an overview of all the queues and gives you a UI to say, run this queue and also allows you to to decide for how much time the queue will be run. But it's uh, if you already are using uh, simple cron or ultimate cron, this, this, is, um, this is a bit redundant because that's a, a feature that is already provided for, for those modules. Uh, we have modules that provide external queues, integration with RabbitMQ, Kafka, SQS, etc. Um, we have been talking about creating queues and processing the queues in Drupal. But uh, well, queues is, are also a very good excuse and a very good way to connect Drupal with third-party systems. Because for instance, we can, 
and this is a high example, we, can, we could send our emails to a queue in whatever of these services that is being not executed by Drupal, by read by another service that sends email in a much more performant way than Drupal does. And we don't need to take care about the resources in our server or whatever, because anything is happening outside. And also we have uh, this module that is queue unique. Uh, sometimes when we are adding too many items to the queues, we are adding them twice before they are processing. Imagine that we are indexing nodes and we are, uh, during a short period of time, we are saving the same node or editing the same node 10 times. So that item would be added to the regular queue 10 times and would be indexed later 10 times. And that's not necessary because at the time that it would be indexed, only, only once need to be. So queue unique adds a hash to, uh, to the table and when you are trying to add in uh, an item that is already there, you, uh, it's rejected and it's not, uh, you are avoiding to have duplicated items in your queue. And we also have the warmer module. This is a module that is based on queues, uh, but it's not for processing queues. Basically, warmer module is a very helpful one to <coughs> repopulate or cache after the, the cache is, is cleared. So it creates a queue. Uh, by default, it, it has multiple plugins, but by default, it provides plugins to, to recache or to warm the cache for a specific entities or a specific page. So after you clear cache, it creates a queue that it's being processed and it loads your pages or entities. So the first user that access your page or access your API, if you are creating a, a decoupled site, will not need to wait because the cache is called. So the, the items will be already cached uh, by default. And here we have some numbers. Uh, well, we are having some progress. We are still seeing some peak when we are increasing, but if you see here, we are talking about one second compared to four minutes when we have 10K users. So that's a pretty good improvement. <laughs> And also, if we talk about memory, we are having like four megabytes of memory consumed when we have 10K users. If we compare this with the original data, you can see how the normal implementation and the batch API-based implementations are taking about four minutes to be executed. And here, we are talking about one second. So that's a huge improvement for user experience, or users will be much happier. And also, if we are talking about memory, we, are, uh, we have the normal implementation that it takes like 200 megabytes, and the batch and queue implementation that are taking around five megabytes. So not only our users will be happy, our servers will be happier, our servers will be capable to manage much more requests in parallel. And well, so these are the, the main takeaways I'd like to, you to have from, from this talk is that analyzing your tasks and the things that you have to do is something crucial. It's something that uh, we need to have into account before the, the problems happen, but at the same time, we need to have a strategic balance. Uh, Adding the, these queues, as you can see, is not solving the problems, it's just moving the problems somewhere else that are easier to solve and is not affecting to the, to the end user. But uh, we need, if we move to this kind of approaches, we need to think about how we are going to, to handle the, the things that we delegate to this, to this background process or secondary task. But on the other hand, it's an scalability advantage we all need to have it into account. And when we are working on our sites, try to have it in mind that it could happen in the future. And the most important thing is that we are here to enhance the user satisfaction. This is a way to try to, to make our users happier. And well, uh, finally, a uh, personal reflection that mm, sometimes we are trying to do too many things, but the fastest task is the task that's, that is not done. So, well, let's try to, to think about it and 
to, to have it in mind when, when we are implementing our, our website. And well, that's all I was uh, going to talk about. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your, your patience. And here you have the slides. And here you have, in this repository, you have their say.hi social network code. Please don't take my ideas. I want to be a millionaire. And well, if you have any questions, uh, that's your time. So someone is asking, where did you time that one second? I assume not everything is processed after every queue run then. So who made this question, maybe? <coughs> well, the thing, yeah, after uh, what I was measuring, it was the, the time that the user experienced when they submit the form. So when we are creating the queue, we are the user experience is that they it takes like one second to get the response. It, the emails are not being sent in one second. The emails are being sent later uh, in the in the cron runs or well, whatever part you are using to, to run your queue. Any other question, please? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time.